Okay, so we're on the step three here. Now, uh, if you're following the directions, uh, I'm going to be, so if you've got the original directions, uh, we're reordering the way that this step goes a fair amount. So just kind of pay attention. It's the same steps, it's just in a different order. Uh, for this stage, you're going to need your two drive motors that are left over. So there should be the middle and the longest uh, drive, drive rods. The longest one is the Y drive, the, sh the middle size one is the X drive. Um, you will also need for this step much. Let's see. Yeah. You also will need all of the smaller length uh, M3 screws that have the round heads on them. So there should be eight of those. Those are the ones that go straight into the motors. Uh, in your Component manual, you'll have a full size guide in terms of how big they are and stuff, but it's just those guys. Okay, and then uh, you also need your Z assembly that you already done before. So, um, first up, easiest place to start will actually be to put your uh, x-axis in. Now, generally you want to put the wires coming going out this direction. So if you just feed them through like that and have the wires coming out the side. The main thing is don't put the wires coming out the top or this side. Uh, and they can basically go either this way or down. It's kind of your preference as to how you want to clean up the wires afterwards. Uh, this motor has the longest wires in relation to the distance to the drive board, so I tend to put it coming up the side this way so that it takes up some of the space. Now again, you might want to get the screw started and then kind of help center everything before really cranking down. Also, if you really tie it down too much, uh, it, it may make it difficult for you to get the screw started in the other locations. So, basically it's just these four screws. So once you've got the four in, you can kind of give it a wiggle, kind of get it centered, and then you can snug it down. Again, don't go too crazy on the force. This is plastic, even though it's going into metal, but also aluminum is relatively soft, so you don't want to push too hard on it. Okay. Next one is your y-axis drive, and again, we're going out of order in relation to the uh, instruction manual, so um, probably at least some of you guys will actually see this as the second step, but in our original instruction manual, this is the third step, the fourth step, actually. So uh, put it in here, you can either have it facing down or to the left, uh, either way works. I think maybe having it uh, 
going to the left is probably a little bit easier to manage. Not really looping so much, but it probably doesn't matter that much. But you've got other wires going through that area, so it may make it a little bit easier for you to kind of clean up. Okay, again, four screws go into the motor face. Generally, just kind of get them in place first and then go back and tighten it down. Give it a little shake and tighten it down. Alrighty, so that's your X and Y and drive motors. Next step is, so you see this wire here, you probably want to keep it kind of in between these tabs. And then take your C-axis assembly and mate it up with the tabs in this wall. Uh, do be a little bit careful with the wires that are hanging around. Snug everything up. Look and see if there's anything that's kind of hanging out in a weird way or bowed out or anything like that. And then, again, watch your wires. And you're going to put your screw in that hole right there. And all this screw does is just keep the uh, assembly from coming back out. Okay. Again, don't go crazy with the force. You're screwing into plastic, all right? So. As soon as you feel it tightening up, that's good enough. Okay, uh, that is it for this step. So, okay, so what did we do? So we put these two motors in place, we put the Z assembly in place, uh, we put four screws into each of the driver motors, and we put one screw here. Okay, so on to step four.